Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, live from South Yorkshire. 7 a.m. You know, you know. That's why you've tuned in. And I'm joined today by young Leon. All right. How are you doing, Leon? I'm not bad, to be honest. Uh, a bit tired. It's a bit early. So, what? day off today from college. What top's that you've got on? City. All the way, mate. All the way. <laughs> Only cost Liverpool have got no centre-halves. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a number on you this season. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> right then. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for liking and subscribing, and leaving a comment. And all them people complaining about adverts, Complain to YouTube, not me. It's not to do with me, all right? But get behind the channel because we're going places. But I want to thank you all because we've laid the foundations now and we're coming up to our three-year anniversary at end of the month. So we've only really been trying for that 18 months, really, I suppose, 20 months. Mm -hmm. But get behind us because big things planned, all right? You can be part of the Porky Express train then. Because we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna rip rip it up, Snoop Doggy Dog style. <laughs> Got some questions, on you, uh, young Leon from West York? Uh, yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Should we fire, fire away? away? Yeah, let's go. So, um, obviously, at the weekend you got Terence Crawford uh, fighting. Uh, it's not been picked up by British broadcasters. Eddie Earns left it, and I'm just thinking it's top notch fight. You know. Crawford's a massive fire, so why why has it not been picked up and said we've been given a triple threat female fight? Right, well, let me just give you my take on it, which I've done many times in the last few weeks. Has Eddie Earn got a show this weekend? Yes or no? No. Well, he has, yeah. There you go. Is that on Sky? Yeah. Right. Well, why can't they go from the Sky Boxing this weekend, we all them women on, and then into early hours, going to American show with Kel Brook. Why they didn't yeah. have to do pay per view, but they could have got get Kel a bit of money from that. Why, why couldn't they do that? Why not? God only knows. God only knows. They didn't have the it, money, did they? Well, nobody's got the money nowadays, but you know what I mean. You just you can't keep the fans like in England. We want to see these fights, but instead of being able to see these fights, we have to wait at least a week before we can watch it. And to be honest, I find that a bit unfair. Well, I've heard there might be one of the one a few problems with one of them women fights on this weekend. Just a little whisper, but you never yeah. know, you never know. It could be uh, could be uh, not true, but I think it might be right off a good source. But this is how I look at it, right? This is how mm. I look at it. Kel broke went on a really long run with Matchroom and yeah. he made him a lot of money, especially on them pay-per-views that he had. And uh, he always delivered, yeah, Eddie Earn might have lost money on shows in Sheffield with him and blah de blah I've heard he lost a bit of money on that last fight they had with Kale Brook. That's why he went yeah. quiet on him. And I can understand that, but let's have it right. You've made more with Kale Brook than you've lost with him. But are you just going to mm. discard him like rubbish like that? Yeah, it's not fair on it's not fair on Kel Brook, and it's like I say, it's not fair on the fans either because people want to see him fight. Yeah, so it's one of them things, isn't it? It's uh, it's the harsh reality of being a pimp. <laughs> David Hay. <laughs> David Hay, he's they're all in the same boat now, aren't they? David Hay. Yeah, they all are. David Hay's probably not going to fight again. Eddie Earns not fought mm. since he were Eddie Hills, 4 and 0, free by way of. You know, when he were an amateur super heavyweight, so he tells us. Eddie yeah. Hills, super, ham <laughs> super amateur star, heavyweight, super heavyweight. <laughs> 4 and 0, oh, free dear. by way of, representing Billy Ricky Club. Uh, not true. But uh, Kelbrook against Crawford. I think it's a great fight, but this is how I look at it. Kelbrook 
admits himself he's not a 147 fighter. Everybody around him does, and they were never ever going to put him in at 147 ever again because safety is paramount. That's what they said, didn't they? Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> all these years after the Golovkin fight, how many years is it? Five and a half year? When were Golovkin when fought? It, it, 16 or 15? I think it was. 15. I thought it was a bit of 15, wasn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, 15. Five and a half year after Golovkin, or over five years. We've got Kel Brook still fighting at 147. Mm. Didn't, didn't he learn anything from the uh, Errol Spence fight? I mean, who, who's advising this kid? God only knows. It's, I think, to be honest, it's a dangerous fight for Brook. I think Crawford is a good fighter. Obviously, he's one of the best in the division, if not the best in the division. So, I think... It's definitely going to be a tough fight. It'll be a good watch when it's finally out. Um, and yeah, that's that's what I've got to say about that. All right, then. Uh, well, like I said, I want Kel Brook to win and stick it to that Sky Matchroom lot. I, I hope he does win. I hope he does, but I think it'll be a tough fight for him. Now, be honest, right? You know it's going to be more than a tough fight, don't you? Oh, yeah. It's going to be a war. It's going to be a war in that ring. A war? Well, it's either going to be a war or a slaughter, isn't it? <laughs> a slaughter. How many, times, <laughs> how many times have we heard fighters who are on comeback trail saying the stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet? Oh. I'm, I'm eating steak now. I'm eating steak for breakfast. <laughs> steak. <laughs> What's that got to do with Price of fish. <laughs> right. oh, oh, it's just it's a bit of a joke at the minute. <laughs> everybody, everybody. Yeah. I don't think there's. Uh, yeah, there's. I've not heard so many people in the last three months come out and say that they're bigger, they're better, they're stronger than ever before. But on the night, they're not actually showing that. The Jack and Nori storytellers. Right. Look at it like this. Right. Kel Brook's going to come out. He's got best trainer. He's at best camp. When do you hear anybody say anything other? They've got best this, best that. They're coming for mm. it. It's going to be a two-time champion and all that. I'm eating steak. I've got chocolate brownies. <laughs> I'm going to let them chocolate brownies go. I'm eating steak. <laughs> I'm not sure of warm weather training. I'm not with you. I'm a <laughs> trainer now. It's utter Jeez. knackers, but I wish him well. Yeah, I don't want to. Hear I think a lot of it is. I think a lot of it is mind games as well. Like it's trying to put the other fighter in an uncomfortable position, so they're like, it gets kind of stuck in the brain. Like, you know, they're going to be better than me. It's like putting doubt, planting the seed of doubt. If you know what I mean. Listen, mate. We were told Kel Brook were a middleweight, weren't we, five and a half years ago. We're never mm. fighting at 147 again. I'm a middleweight. I'm a beast. I'm, I, I spar Carl Froch. I'm a beast. Yeah, we're sparring Carl Froch. And Carl Froch was a super middle. And he weighed lighter than Kel Brook. So that shows you mm. what weight he's having to take off, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Carl Froch never went above 13 stone in his full professional career. Never Jeez. went above 13 stone and he fought, he fought at 12, got in ring at 172. So he never went above 13 stone. Crazy. You know what I mean? Crazy. So, you know what I mean? He, he took 14 pound off in 14 week camp, pound a week, and he put four pound back on correctly. Did it correctly. Fought the same weight all his career. Yeah. Fair play, fair play. I mean that it is a hard thing to do as well, isn't it? To control like your weight, like just so it's bang on, so you can stay in that division or not. Because it a lot relies on it as well. Because if you're out of that weight division in the weigh-in, you're not going to get the fight. So, I think for someone to stay under 13 stone throughout a whole professional career, that is in, that is incredible. Look at Clinton Woods, right? I know Clinton well. I know his story well. Clinton were never out of shape. 
in between fights, never out of shape because he's, he's always on go. He gets up in the morning at six o'clock and he's on go all day. Even if he's not in the gym, he'll be doing something around up where he lives and that in his garden. And we're doing something, painting, plastering. He'll be mooching about. He can't sit still. He can't mm -hmm. sit still, Clinton. So you're burning energy all the time. He eats like a pig all day. All he does is eat all, all day. Yeah. Off. What are these other people doing? Your Kel Brooks, your Ricky Atoms, your Nazi Mohammed. Look, have you seen he that? State. Moment? Fat as a pig. Hey, sorry. Fat as a pig, Michelin man. Michelin man. Have you seen the <laughs> right between fights? Fat as two Michelin. Yeah, man. yeah. Wow, it's the same as Chisora. Chisora, he got a bit out of shape last year. Never been then in he, shape. Like, You've never been in shape. Oh, what are you talking about? He's in the best shape he's ever been in right now, Porky. Oh, man. <laughs> Gillian White, right, between one of his other fights, they put him in a show. Ready, steady, cook or something, wasn't it? He blew up to over 20 stone. <laughs> what about? Hey, well, that's a good career move, isn't it, that? Ready, steady, cook. Yeah. Wasn't White saying as well that he was... Uh, he doubts that Pavet can actually got COVID nineteen. Boxing Social said something about that. Well, I don't, they? Well, well, you can't go for a B test with COVID, can you? No. Where's Dylan White's <laughs> B test? Where's your B sample, Dylan? Come see. Me. <laughs> oh. But yeah, um, what what do you think about that then? If he's doubting Pavetkin's COVID test. Well, listen. Did I call this? I called it. I said, look. Povetkin's 41 year old. He can't have yeah. uh, another fight in that short period of time. His body needs time to recover. He won't be able to go 12 rounds. So no. they get out, aren't they? And what's going to happen now is Povetkin's going to be a better Povetkin when he gets in with White. Yeah, yeah. Povetkin. And Dylan White, he, he's had his preparations messed up, hasn't he? Yeah. He'll be sat in a Sri Lankan curry now with loads of nan breads. And then he was another week. Popper doms. <laughs> or whatever, he, whatever it'll be. He, he likes his scram, doesn't it? Look, nobody in the boxing community is saying that Dylan White hasn't got a killer left up. But what else has he got, really? I don't think he's got yeah, the same. I'd say the same for Deontay Wilder as well, though. Other than that right hand, he's, he's not really got much about him. Yeah, he's, he can take a couple of punches, but... The, the right hand, that's all I see him throwing. That it's like his only weapon. And when he can't get that off, it just doesn't work out for him. I mean, what, what has... Sorry, go on. That's all right, you go on. What has Dylan White got now? He's older, right? He's a lot older. He's flying back and forward to Portugal all the time. He's a lot older than he were uh, when, he had, when he were with Mark Tibbs. Who's his best win? He's now got a trainer... That, the, uh, in my opinion, he's very experienced and he won't know a left jab from a left cross. He would, they don't know what they're doing. It were organized chaos in that corner when they were fighting. Yeah. He had Pavetkin on hook. What, what were they doing? Why, why, what we were trying to show off and admire his work. You know, when you get somebody on hook like that, you get them out of there because you don't get paid overtime, do you? No, no. You know I mean? But he could have still fought, though. He could have fought Hunter, right, who fought Povetkin, and a lot of people said he won. Yeah. He could have fought Hunter. Why didn't he? Risky fight, and yeah. the no ranking, with, with not as better, not as good a ranking, and Sky probably yeah, didn't it, it, on it as well. Yeah, it probably wouldn't have been as big as a payday as well. Yeah, it probably wouldn't have been. Yeah. So, what do you think about Eddie's book then? Do you think he's the relentless man that he says he is? <laughs> no, he's not. He's no, not, he's, no not. he's not. Is it number one? No. Why no. is it saying it's big? It's number one, he isn't. It, it's gone down to a tenner already, hasn't it? After two weeks, it's a tenner now from 20 quid. And that's <laughs> including that's and they're giving away free delivery. Evening, Eddie. No way. Free delivery. Uh, so what, what's his book worth now then? Five quid? If that, to be honest. They've got delivery. <laughs> They've got the stuck with all the Medium books. 
They'll be giving them away for a quid in a few months. Probably, probably. In a lucky bag. The th- a thing that annoyed me about Eddie Hearn recently was uh, Dave Allen's fight. Like, that's Dave Allen's payday. He's spent that time in that training camp training. We appear to have lost Leon because he's uh, got a cheap Wi Fi from Aldi. He'll be back in a minute. What happens with Man City fans? They try and do it on cheap. Here's Leon. Cut, cut out for a minute. <laughs> no, go on. You were saying. But yeah. Um, the thing is, right? Dave Allen's been at that training camp. He's been training. He's been getting himself ready for that fight. And days before the fight, they turn around and say that paperwork's not been signed. Mm. How is that fair? That's not. The- if anything, Don King should have sorted it out, or Eddie Hearn should have sorted it out. One of, the, or both of them work together to sort it out and get him a fight because that's not fair that he doesn't get a payday because Christopher Lovejoy didn't sign his paperwork. Right, this is how I look at it. Dave Allen, he's his own West enemy, isn't he? That's fucking weird. What's going on here, Liam? Rank amateur, mate. Dave Allen, in my opinion, Liam, is his own West Enemy, knocking Mark Mark Bennett fight back, Simon Vallali fight back. He's knocked Simon Vallali, Mark Bennett back. Uh, he's knocked Dubar back, Bacoli. There's, there's another one as well he's knocked back. I forgot his name, but you can't keep knocking fights back. And then when you get a fight against somebody who nobody's seen, there's no footage of Love Joy, Love Joy fighting. He's only fought in pubs in Mexico. He's a Don King fighter and he's got a WBA number 15 ranking. So Dave will be secretly hoping that Eddie can get that fight on again and pinch that ranking. But yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. So that's how I look at it, Leon. I think you need to get a new computer, mate. So, Liam's last appearance on Porky's Corner. <laughs> well, that's how I look at it regarding Dave Allen, Leon. But we wish him well. And I feel sorry for Dave Allen. I really feel sorry for him. Yeah. The simple reason he's seen he's had a camp and that he's put a lot of effort in. But we've heard all that before, haven't we? Stronger, faster, yeah, quicker. Yeah, we have. Well, it, Operation White Rhino 8.5 and all that. And Papi Della pay per view and. Papi Della Hoy and Papi Della Doncaster and Papi Della DN12. Yeah. Papi, Papi, Papi. He's not even got any kids. So why is he called <laughs> Papi? I'm the Papi with the kids. So of, of, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> did you see what um, he said about Lovejoy? What Lovejoy said to him? No, I didn't. But uh, your questions are astounding, Leon. For a seventeen-year-old. Oh, Leon's gone again, which is brilliant. Keeps cutting out. <laughs> What's this hammer tonight? Or hammer tomorrow? Uh, go on then. What? Uh, I didn't see what he said. No, I didn't see. Um, apparently, um, Dave Allen went up to him, and. Lovejoy told him that he doesn't know how to box. Lovejoy doesn't know how to box. Well, I am over fucking whelmed that Dave Allen said <laughs> Lovejoy. <laughs> <laughs> you really fucking me knowledge here, Leon, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they go out and, go out and uh, play hide and seek. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jeez, I keep letting people on the channel. I think Liam's part casual, aren't you, Liam? You'll be watching this back. There's something to tell your mates about in in, uh, in local youth club, won't it? <laughs> you see, we've got to give everybody a chance to come on here and express themselves. Whether you're an hardcore or whether you're a casual like Liam, Leon, because you're a casual part casual, aren't you, Liam? No, I'm not a casual, Ross. <laughs> no, you're not going to get your hardcore badge today, lad. <laughs> it keeps cutting out I don't know why 
it's saying I've got full signal. All right, then why don't you go through your questions then quick before it comes out again and we'll get some graph done. Well, then what else do you want to ask? Um, yeah, um, I've got one more question for you. Um, the Mawimba fight the other night uh, against Marku. Is it Marku? Yeah. Pretty sure it's Marku. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't know why he got put. You don't know why he got put what? You don't know. If you're talking about the Moeba fight, you're going to say you don't know why he got put in with that guy by Steffi Bull. Steffi Bull is the manager of Moma Moeba. He's been on my channel, him. So Steffi, Steffi Bull's the manager, right? He's put him in yeah. on that show, right? He's done it for the simple reason that he wants to get the kid paid. But the problem we've got at the moment in boxing, young Leon, with machine that keeps cutting out, the problem we've got is kids that are novices, right, are going in against good kids now that they shouldn't really be fighting. That kid there, the Steffi Bull fighter, he went into that fight four and one. Now, normally, he'd be 12 and 13 and one, and he would be fighting guys with losing records. But what Steffi's done is put him in with a guy six and oh with four knockouts that he shouldn't be in with. Rocky, shut your mouth while I'm conducting business. Come here. So he shouldn't be in that ring with that kid. And you, you saw what happened. You saw what happened. It were a first round, was it a first round demolition? Yeah, first round. Yeah. First round demolition. What trainer Ray Doyle, I believe he were, he looked to me like his ass fell out and he went out his depth and he didn't know what he were doing. Ray Doyle, you didn't know what you were doing. In my opinion, you flapped. That's because you're not experienced enough. And the kid, your fighter, he's not good enough to be in, a, in with a guy like that. So why put him in like that? Because opportunity knocks and people have got to get paid. And this is what's mm. happening now. People are taking fights that they shouldn't be taking because they want money. And I just feel that kids need to learn the craft a bit more. Kids need to learn the craft a bit more. That's my opinion anyway. I just think learn your craft and just sit it out. Go get a job. Go get a job and sit it out. Don't be putting kids in that are four and one that have hardly got any experience whatsoever going in with big punchers. Because you've just seen yeah, what no. happened. Do you know what's going to happen? Somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah, Somebody big time. I can understand Steffi Bull wanting to get the kid a payday, wanting to get out there and get, get his lad out there. My heart bleeds for the kid. Not for Steffi Bull. My heart bleeds for the kid. But normally that, that kid, Mumba Moeba. I swear he's like 32, isn't he? Wait a minute, you're putting in, kid. Normally that kid would be fighting somebody five and 30, not somebody six and all with four knockouts. Do you see where I'm coming from? And that's the danger. Go on, you can talk now, kid. <laughs> I swear he's like 32, that Mawimba. Hmm. He started in 2017, didn't he? Wakes up next, doesn't he? Or Ikea or something I'm, like that. I'm oh. not sure. He won't fight again, that kid now. That's it. He won't fight again now. I don't think he fights again. Yeah. If he fights again, he'll never be the same kid again. So that's a kid ruined, isn't no. it? No. Yeah, it's like that margarita. Oh? That, uh, did you not know about that margarita, the one that had um, hand wraps, where, with the hand wraps? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he got beat, didn't he, when he got caught, and then he never fought the same again. He got beat, I think he got, was it three defeats after, and then he retired, something like that. You mean the guy who cheated against Miguel Cotto with the hand wraps? You mean him? Yeah, with the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he would have cheated, so he needs a good hiding, doesn't he, as far as I'm concerned? Yeah. Yeah. No, no down for cheating in boxing, in my opinion. No, no. All at all. and all these trainers that's fighters keep failing instead of uh, performance enhancing drugs tests, PEDs. They need running out of sport as well. And you know what I'm on about, mm. don't you? Dominic Ingle, come see me. Aye. <laughs> uh, well, Get right. yourself on Porky Corner. 
<laughs> All right, Dominic Ingle, come on, come on, Porky's Corner via Zoom and explain <laughs> yourself why three of your fighters have failed performance enhancing drug tests because I want to know. Because if you fail a fourth test, are you going to hand your license into Robert Smith and Charlie Giles, aka nosesinthetrough.com? <laughs> that's what I, that, 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 that's what I want to know, mate. Yeah, to be honest, I think someone who cheats, like I've got, I don't have no respect because someone's going into that fight expecting a fair fight, and you're getting punched with concrete on your gloves. <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? It's well, just not right, is it? Well, there's no difference between that or somebody taking steroids, having more strength. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you go twelve rounds at a mm. pace like Jarrell Miller. So there's no, you know, boxing, right? It's the only sport in the world, and Brendan Ingle always says this, it's the only sport in the world where you can get killed legally. You can kill somebody in boxing and not even get a 50-quid fine. Did you know that? Yeah, obviously, it's like one punch there with your bare knuckles and you're dead. It's your temple, isn't it? It's a very dangerous sport for people to be like, taking advantage of something like that and making it worse unfair yeah not like like you say even taking steroids what's the point you know you're only cheating yourself at the end of the day yeah that's true that's true any more questions leon uh, that's all i've got for you today all right you know next time you come on you're gonna have to have a better connection and some better questions, aren't we, kid? You're going to be more prepared next yeah. time. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put you to the bottom of the list for next time. <laughs> I'm joking. Um. I'll get lost for putting this out now. The return of Leon, the hardcore, hardcore. <laughs> uh. All right. All right, then. Well, listen, thanks for coming on. Like I said, yeah, no worries, man. we don't. Uh, What's the word? We don't discriminate here at Porky's Corner. We let everybody come on and have the say. But a lot of people, what, what we have, the problem I've got at the moment is a lot of people, they want to have the say on the comments section. They want to have the say in emails. But when it comes down to actually sitting in front of a camera, they don't yeah. want to do it. They want to start giving me all I mean, the excuses. It is tougher than it looks, though, to come on. Because sometimes when you like when you're talking on camera, it's like your mind just goes blank and you can't think. <laughs> what you do? You go to prison for ten years, mate. You talk to your in the mirror all day about what you're going to do when you get out and practice. <laughs> practice how I'm going to make my date my uh, renewal on Porky's Corner. <laughs> That's the one. Well, listen, I respect <laughs> you for coming on because you're only a young kid, aren't you? I respect you for coming on. You're at college, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I respect you for coming on and asking questions, and you probably know more. You probably know, know just as much as me when I was your age at boxing. Probably even more than me. I don't, or around about the same. But as you go along, you'll get better with it, don't you? So I respect yeah. for coming on. A lot of people won't come on. They want to put comments out. Um, I call them telephone tough guys. They want to put keyboard comments out. Keyboard warriors, aren't they? Hiding behind keyboards. <laughs> Come on the channel, there's no to be scared of. Nobody's going to attack you through, through internet connection. Come on <laughs> and say your bit. Oh, you people who keep having digs. I mean, did you see that one the other day? Somebody's having a, some traveller's gone to Mickey Theo's. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that, yeah. And Mickey's there. One of his lads were off, so he's there squirting aloe wheel cleaner on car. He, he didn't even charge the kid for a car. And the, the guy basically was just trying to make an name for himself with, with a video but it's how I look at it every now and then if you go up to Dennis's place he'll be helping lads out lift, getting stuff out of Shredder and you know and just doing his bit not all the time like but and, he, and, he, and he's done alright for himself hasn't he? but I don't get that but this is how I look at it let John Fury and Mickey Theo get it on let them get it on and then get at it. Put it to, get at it. Then we can put it to bed because John's gone quiet exactly. now. Exactly. But he is when was the last video he did? John, I don't know. He pipes up every now and then, doesn't he, on Instagram? Mm. Doesn't he? But he, yeah, I'm, I'm losing interest. Me sending it. I'm losing will to live, mate. 
because I, I have Mick, <laughs> Mick is my regular Friday guest, isn't he? Now, he, and yeah. uh, and, he, and I want to say he, he's been his opinions. Everybody agrees with his opinion because he said Usek's footwork. Well, it, it, yeah, he said his footwork. He's, he's he's got the probably the best footwork in the division. He did Ukraine dancing since he was was it seven years old. He started. Well, that's his opinion. Is he entitled to it? Still welcome on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously. Your opinion. People might not agree with your opinion. They might yeah. they might just tune in because they like to hear boxing talk. And they like to hear me dig a few people out and put a bit of comedy to it. That's what it basically yeah. is. But, yeah. Uh, but you're entitled to your opinion. You're brave enough to come on and sit in front of this camera that I've got rigged up to, to tell you thing here, screen. A lot of people don't want to do that because they're frightened. You see, and I don't know why they yeah. have to be like that. Because you can be tough and brave on the comments section, but you put a camera near them, and all of a sudden their asses fall out, don't they? So... <laughs> Come on, Porky's Corner. And for the last time, let me just say, the email is Porky Corner. Not Porky's, it's Porky Corner. No capital letters. Porky Corner at mail.com. That's the email. Send it in and somebody will be in touch with you. Not me, it'll be somebody else will be in touch with you regarding a, a slot. Every now and then I might... Yeah. Deal with emails in early hours if I can't sleep. I'll have a look who we'll sees what sent stuff in. But as regards slots, somebody will deal with you. All right, they'll send you a time, and, and you'll have to get and you'll have to have some back and forth about it. And you'll get a Zoom email and blah blah. blah. We don't want your phone number. We want you on Zoom. We want to see what you look like. If you're coming yeah. on and you're hiding behind the picture, you're not welcome. We want to see who you are because everybody's got plenty to say for themselves behind the keyboard. So let's have you out here. You're all welcome. Anybody's welcome, apart from that little dweeb who were making videos about me. I know you're watching now. Oh, and the what, guy with the map. Listen, what were he doing? All the, well, with a blank screen. <laughs> I've got no time. Oh, that other guy who was sent me, who sent some, he sent, mentioned me, Boominator and Mickey Theo, didn't he? He had a gold mask on. What's all that about? Yeah, yeah. I know. I've seen his video. Get your face on camera. Let's have a look at yours and grow a pair. It'd be funny if it turned out to be John Fury, to be honest. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm a Spartan! <laughs> hey, it's what been in the world? It's 56 <laughs> years old in the world. I'm going to fight Mike Tyson, Dana White, Deontay Wilder, Tony Bell, you, David A. I'll flog them all. I'll tear you limb from limb. Just tear. <laughs> you. All right, then. right then, uh, young young Leon. You take care. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. And don't forget Innovation Alloys, South Yorkshire package, and they know best. All right, you take care. See you, mate. See you later, man. Well, that were young Leon, I think from West Yorkshire. Bad connection and bad questions, but he's had a go, hasn't he? He's 17, coming up 18-year-old, he's at college, he loves the sport of boxing, and I think it's good that somebody that young is interested in the sport, is interested in boxing. I think so. I think that's good. So, all right, so peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Don't have nightmares. <laughs>